Okay, well, fantastic. Well, um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast, this time with our President's Team Achievement Award winning uh, group from ATS, Academic Technology Services. And we have with us today a wonderful group from ATS. Uh, we have their fearless leader, Sharik Ahmed, and he joined only last July. Uh, and we're delighted that he did. Uh, one interesting fact about Sharik and I is that uh, we've never met in person, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, also with us are senior leaders from ATS, Dennis Lupresto, uh, who's been with us since 2016, uh, Marvin Mayer, uh, who's uh, the Interim Director of Instructional Technology Support, uh, Marisa Hernandez, uh, who's an assistant director at ATS, and Jeannie Tan, who's an application program at ATS. And so let's get started right away. It's such a great group. But uh, the first question is, how did you, uh, how, how did you, or what role do you have in ATS at the moment? And how did you get there? So let's start off with you, Jeannie. Thank you, Brian. Uh, so my name is Jeannie Tan. Um, I'm an application programmer in ATS. And uh, what I basically do is um, I work on allowing different systems to talk to each other. For example, PeopleSoft on campus with the Beachboard uh, learning management system that everyone on campus uses. Um, I, I help make the information from one system uh, be usable uh, for another system and um, other projects that I work on are various websites that talk to databases and uh, process information to allow users to uh, better streamline their process and um, be more efficient at their jobs. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you for everything you do to sort of keep us going and uh, we really appreciate the hard work. Um, how about you, Marisa? Yes, hi, thank you. So I do oversee the instructional design team. Um, I'm also very involved with ATI steering committee and the instructional materials uh, subcommittee. <clears throat> so my team and I also really work very closely with faculty in regards to supporting for services for accessible uh, accessibility, right, instructional materials. Um, how I got here is, you know, I've been on campus since 2007. So I've been here for some time working with faculty directly uh, as an instructional design, as well as working with now the BMAC Center, but at the time it was Disabled Student Services. Um, so, so yeah, working very closely with faculty in providing professional development programs, as well as trainings for technology, consultations for one-to-one uh, -one -one consultations and course design. So my passion for accessibility obviously grew with working for DSS or BMAC, and I've been able to now incorporate that with, uh, within you know, this role as assistant director and also having my team also implement that when working with faculty. Fantastic. Well, uh, the, certainly the faculty I speak to uh, always speak highly of you and ATS in general. So whatever it is that you're doing with them, and it sounds like you've done it for a long time, is obviously tremendously successful. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate um, that. Marvin. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Marvin Maya. I'm, I'm currently the interim director of uh, instructional technology support services within ATS. But my role within the team, um, we look over the campus learning management system, uh, you know, beach board, but we have a team of instructional designers. We got technologists and multimedia experts that kind of help the whole process of getting everybody online or just being comfortable with technology and everything related to online hybrid and all the stuff that are tied to instruction in terms of technology wise. But how did I get here? Um, I've, I've done my my undergrad and graduate programs here at Cal State Long Beach. I've been working here as a staff member for almost 16 years. So in ATS, I don't know, for a while, but also uh, I dabble in a teaching within the College of Ed too. So that's, um, you know, I live, uh, breathe and die Cal State Long Beach. So it's just a good thing to be here. Terrific. So Marvin, you're a modern Renaissance man doing everything and doing everything well. So that's terrific. Well. Great to see you and uh, hear about your achievements. Thank you. 
and um, Dennis Lepresta, with whom I've had uh, the good fortune to work with over uh, uh, the period that I've been here. Uh, so I know a bit about your, you, but uh, Dennis, tell the audience about yourself. Yes, thank you, Brian. Uh, my name is Dennis Lupresto, and I'm the Director of Academic Technology Support Services. Uh, 2016 is when I joined this team. Uh, I've, had, I've served a number of roles, but primarily my role is to oversee the physical locations on campus, the physical learning spaces uh, that are university driven. Uh, they include uh, general lecture spaces, our active learning classrooms, our large lecture halls, the university open labs at the, at the Horn Center and Spidell Center, and uh, academic uh, administrative computing uh, throughout the Division of Academic Affairs. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. There's been a, a wide variety of roles that I've overseen, uh, and I've really get to, gotten to know the team since I've been here. It's been really, really wonderful. Well, that's great. And uh, certainly those of you who are listening can understand how Dennis and his team are really keeping the backbone of the university, our educational spaces, uh, in good shape and making progress. So thank you, Dennis. And uh, in charge of it all, uh, a really daunting job, but one that he does so extremely well, is uh, our relatively new AVP, Sharik Ahmed. So, Sharik. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate uh, the kind words and uh, so excited to have gotten the President's Award. Uh, kudos to the team. Um, so, yeah, as, as, as you mentioned, I, you know, I, I had the honor of jo joining uh, Long Beach last, uh, last July. I am a product of the CSU system. I've, you know, my, my master's and my doctorate is from CSU, past couple of, uh, uh, you know, two other CSUs that I've been at. Um, but over here, I'm excited to lead this excellent team. And uh, my job, I think, Dennis, uh, as Dennis mentioned, also is to uh, is to lead and to uh, to make sure that we have the resources and we can engage with uh, with vendors, with vendor partners, with faculty, and with uh, with students. Make sure that uh, you know we build these partnerships with uh, with our stakeholders, and we provide seamless support to our faculty, to our students, and to our staff. Um, um, I think a, a big portion of what we do here is innovate. And uh, I think uh, I, I, I want to be uh, <clears throat> a facilitator of innovation and make sure that we have the, uh, the budgetary, the human and all other resources to make sure that uh, you know, these wonderful uh, team members can, can do what they do best, which is support and provide uh, uh, support to our, uh, to our faculty and to our students. Um, I, I think one of the things that uh, that I aim to do also, uh, and where we've started working on it, is to align our goals and our initiatives with with uh, the Beach 2030 effort. So uh, that's uh, you know strategic planning, uh, uh, making sure that uh, you know the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, that kind of a thing. But um, just wonderful to uh, to be leading uh, this this great bunch. No doubt about that, Sharik, and uh, thank you so much for your leadership. It's obviously paid off. Uh, as you say, I completely agree. It's an outstanding team. Uh, okay, well, let's sort of ask individual questions and sort of who wants to uh, take this one on? Um, how has COVID-19 and the whole alternative modes of instruction, which of course you've been centrally engaged in, how has that changed your job? So first to answer gets to be the spokesperson. Um, I, I can volunteer. Jeannie, um, you're it. <laughs> here I go. Uh, so overall, I would say that the, the work that I do, since I am kind of more on the behind the scenes um, with, with the support that I provide, um, and I don't interface too much with faculty, I would say that uh, most of my work is still the same, um, but one uh, one approach that I have taken as uh, as I've been influenced uh, by the team is just thinking about uh, faculty during this time and um, switching from from in person classes to AMI. Um, when since I since I help with uh, processing uh, courses and sending that information to Beachboard. Uh, Usually, we, we I start the process of uh, preparing for the upcoming term. I uh, usually around like two months before the end of the semester. But last year at this time, 
um, I started the process uh, four months ahead because uh, just knowing that so many more faculty uh, need to prepare their courses in Beachboard for the upcoming semester, they, they, they would need more time, they would need to attend uh, trainings that ATS provides uh, to better, to best use the training that they receive from ATS. Like I knew that uh, we needed courses in Beachboard ready for instructors to use. So the type of uh, projects that I've been working on, they, they're still the same, but I would say the timeline to provide the, the end product to users has, has um, the time we allow for, for instructors to, to prepare, we, we definitely need to keep that into consideration and, and provide that to them. I think that's such an enlightening uh, comment, um, Jeannie. And I mean, you know, one of the one the phrase that struck me so forcibly as you were speaking was um, how you the first thing you said almost was that uh, you were thinking about faculty during the COVID time, and I think it represents the the ethos of ATS that, you know, you're a service to, to the university and to, to, lock, to our faculty. And uh, even though maybe specifics of jobs haven't changed for you, just the, the structure within which it happens has changed and that's, that's how you interpret your job. So thank you, that's really insightful and good to hear. Um, uh, some of you may know that I'm actually a statistician by training, so I always love statistics, but uh, here's another question for you. What, what Have you noticed any statistics uh, with faculty and staff um, who are using ATS services before COVID and after COVID? I don't know if uh, anyone has, has those figures at their fingertips, but uh, I'm curious to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I could chime into that. So how are, you know, how AMI, AMI has made a change with ATS is, as you could imagine, there's a big increase now with uh, not only Zoom support and Beachboard support, but also in general with the professional development programs that we're providing on campus. So, you know, last, before, before the pandemic, we were doing uh, professional developments once a semester, right, based on faculty's um, availability. Whereas now we've done from some or from spring 2020 to, to now we've done six professional development wow. programs. Yeah, and we're going to continue to provide those professional development programs for faculty. So again, offering those again in the summer as well as for fall. Um, we've done about 103 live trainings uh, from from again from spring 2020, which have been about approximately about 9000 attendees for these trainings. Um, as well as, um, you know, it went from 5% of courses being online to Beachboard to now 97%. So to kind of put things in perspective, um, for spring 2020, we had about 33,000 artifacts that were, you know, that, that artifacts meaning instructional materials that faculty have uploaded into Beachboard to now being um, for, for, for spring, uh, 360,000 artifacts. Um, wow. Yeah, and for fall 2020, it's, uh, you know, we can imagine it's just going to be more. So, so very big difference between, you know, pre-COVID to now. Um, so, yeah, and, and also when we started the pandemic or, you know, last spring 2020, when we were getting ready to transition and to shift, it was really, you know, what could we provide faculty at a very, you know, fast pace, right, to get everyone prepared. Uh, we created templates, which really was helpful for faculty so that they didn't have to. And these templates actually live within Beachboard. So what these templates are is, you know, faculty don't have to create from scratch, because as you could imagine, faculty who have never even touched Beachboard before are not familiar with it. So it's mm -hmm. really important, really important to have, you know, all types of, um, you know, skill sets who are comfortable with technology and comfortable with Beachboard to be able to use a template that accommodates them and their students. So with that being said, we had about close to, it was about 1800 requests and that number just continues to grow, so. Wow, incredible numbers and uh, really remarkable to, um, to consider. And here's a shout out to our faculty, of course, who may be listening or certainly are probably too busy to be listening, but how incredible that um, our, our over 2,000 faculty were able to, with your assistance, just move to 97% online almost overnight. Mm -hmm. That's a remarkable achievement. So thank you for all the 
all, all that you've done to make it possible. Sharika, uh, you, you, you might have some additional uh, information there. Yeah, th those, uh, thank you, Brian. I mean, those numbers are huge. And uh, we've seen a huge shift in, in, in faculty's interest in technologies in, in everything that we're offering. But I just wanna, you know, since you, you mentioned that you're a statistician, I'll give you some, uh, some uh, you know, some uh, high level numbers. Beach board logins, uh, uh, Brian, have, have doubled since, uh, since last year. Our Zoom meetings, uh, th those have been impacted the most. So just to give you a, you know, a, you know, a, a sense, uh, back into in December 2019, we had about a thousand meetings in, in the month of December 2019. Well, uh, December 2020, when we measured it, it was at, at about 64,000 meetings, uh, you know, in, in wow. that one month. So, I mean, it's just staggering the way uh, technology is being used. Beach Media, which is our video platform, um, has seen a, a tenfold increase in, in the number of videos that are viewed. So a lot of faculty are posting videos. A lot of students are viewing videos in terms of, uh, you know, uh, getting up to speed. Our mobile app uh, that, uh, that ATS also handles. Uh, we have about 10,000 users on our mobile app, and uh, it saw a peak of about 35,000 users who opened the, uh, opened the app in August 2020. So we plan to make sure that we have uh, a lot of information and uh, uh, pertinent information that we can provide to, uh, to students over there. Our soft, uh, software downloads have increased by 40% from 10,000 downloads to about 14,000 downloads. Yes. And uh, I think Marissa may have mentioned our Zoom support that we provide uh, and we intend to provide. So what happened is like we used to provide face-to-face -face support in the past. And then when we went, uh, you know, online, now we're providing, uh, you know, Zoom rooms where faculty, students can jump in and ask questions. So that has uh, gone up uh, 300% or three times uh, since, since, and, you know, we, we want to continue this. We're going to provide when we come back in fall, we're going to provide face-to-face -face as well as uh, continue to provide the online support because it's just so convenient. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sharik. I mean, as I, you know, I could listen to numbers all day, but uh, you know, we, we, I know that not everyone uh, it, it likes uh, likes figures as much as I do. So we'll probably stop there. But incredibly impressive ability of your team to to accommodate this this growth. You know, the, the kind of ten times, four times, three times growth. Uh, just to remind everyone, there hasn't been really any increase in staff. Uh, so staff at ATS are taking on these additional responsibilities and, and managing. So kudos to you as well. Um, what's interesting to me, and I mean, I'm not expecting a comment. I'm just making an editorial comment, is that I wonder how, mu how, how much of this will, will remain post-pandemic. I know that some people have discovered an unexpected liking for online or alternative modality instruction. Others much prefer to go back to face to face. And what I've said is that we'll accommodate all of those ranges. But I suspect that more people will be doing, uh, will be using technology effectively in their classes than before the pandemic. So um, given the huge number of things that, that are available out there, what, what do you as ATS experts recommend or, or, or advise for our faculty, staff and students to, to have a look at or use? Hey, Brian. Uh, yeah, we do offer quite a number of uh, on-campus resources and uh, technologies that faculty and students can uh, leverage to facilitate their teaching and learning. Um, some of those some of those things include like software depot. Uh, there's a there's a ton of effort and time that goes into uh, procuring software that that is relevant to uh, in class instructions that we've put on to our uh, software depot, which can be accessed through single sign on that allows students and faculty to download software that that, uh, that is used in the classroom typically online or the on campus resources such as the university open labs uh, those are resources that are available to students to help uh, if they don't happen to have good internet at home or uh, the proper equipment or their, their learning environment at home is just not uh, what it needs to be uh, so there, we partnered up with the student union to establish a, a temporary lab uh, that that's uh, that's practice that that's safe you know all cleaning measures are taken uh, taken into consideration 
and furthermore, our uh, learning environments. Uh, we've uh, converted a couple of our uh, classrooms into high flex uh, areas for faculty to uh, take advantage if they have the same situations. You know, the digital divide is not limited to just students, it's faculty as well. It could be spotty internet at home, it could be uh, poor equipment, or just not good teaching environments, similar to the learning environments for students. So uh, faculty, uh, to take advantage of that, I highly recommend that they reach out to their department coordinators to see if one of these high flex rooms is an option for them. Uh, but that's, that's one of the things I would really recommend uh, to our students and faculty is to uh, look at some of the online resources that are on campus resources and online resources that ATS has. Terrific. I, I know, you know, just from my casual looks behind SSO <clears throat> that there's wonderful software available. I know that we've also made an effort in conjunction with ITS and everyone else to, to provide equipment for students and faculty like headsets and laptops and, and iPads and um, you know, we've, we've, um, I know ITS and you have been rolling out virtual labs and, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of a cornucopia of things available. W one of the things that, you know, of course is very much on our minds as, as we're at the beach is, is how can, how can, how can our technology resources be used and how can it be responsive for students across different identities and, and backgrounds? And that's sort of a difficult, almost philosophical question, but um, uh, maybe Marvin, do you want to have a go? Sure, I'll, I'll take a stab at this one. Um, I think uh, holistically, I, I think just to be able to to, um, to help students across different identities. I think we did a first thing about like economic challenges, right? Like providing the, the resources, the laptops, the Wi-Fi access and all those things too. But I think another piece is um, economic where, um, you know, affordability for um, digital resources. You know, we've partnered very closely with the bookstore and the chancellor's office to kind of integrate um, open, educational, open educational resources within courses, working with faculty to find um, free things for students so they don't have to pay for their official you know textbook the hundreds hundreds of dollars they have to normally spend and you know also working with um you know just finding things uh, that are available for them but um we want also want to increase um you know digital usage you know whether it's through the mobile app or whether it's through um any of these um platforms through the web and make it more convenient for these students to have um, access to their coursework and just be able to look at their grades and things too through um through digital means. But um, one major thing for um, I think when you want to talk about accessibility is uh, we're, we're actually rolling out a, a new tool called Blackboard Ally. And um, this is a tool that we're, we're integrating within Beachboard. It's going to be open to the campus uh, this fall upcoming. And we're, we're um, it's a way to raise awareness of um, just the, the content that uh, Marissa mentioned earlier, all those thousands of contents to make sure that it's accessible for a different variety of uh, disability needs, whether it's visual, whether it's audio, and and all those different things, and it's a good way to see what you've uploaded in the in Beachboard actually makes sense, and you know there's flagging for um, you know ways to remediate to make it accessible for things like that too. So those are some some positive things that we're trying to do at least uh, on a broad campus scale. We've um, we've created or, or we offered a student online success program where we incentivize students to learn more how to be successful online. We gave some incentives for students to complete these modules, these online, 100% online modules within Beachboard. And that's been very positive. And we're hoping to do that again in the near future as well. So we're just trying to partner up with, uh, you know, our, our partners with uh, Student Affairs, ITS, and all these things to kind of integrate like a good seamless uh, system to make sure that, you know, we make the best possible experience for our students and wherever backgrounds they do have. Well, it's fantastic. And I think, you know, you, you've just scratched the surface of, of the differential needs, but, but just shows how much we're all thinking about, uh, about these, as you say, differential issues. I, I'd, I'd actually like to take the opportunity of giving a shout out to three presidents. And um, the first is uh, ASI president, Omar Prudencio Gonzalez, who's brought uh, many of student issues to us and to you. And uh, I think you've responded really well. 
the second is, of course, uh, President Connolly, who, apart from being aware and very concerned about these and other issues, has very much provided the funding for us to do this work. So thank you, President Connolly. And uh, last, uh, two days ago, uh, President Biden talked about expanding broadband use for uh, everyone in the United States and uh, expanding infrastructure, uh, which we hope will have some uh, impact on, on these differential needs of our, of our population. So thank you to the three presidents. Um, I... Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you, as, as a naive technology user, what, what advice do you have for me, for our faculty, for our students, for our staff, uh, about technology? I don't know who wants to take that, who, who wants to take it, but Sharik, maybe you're the person who can give me advice. I'll take a stab at it, uh, uh, Brian. It's a it's a tough question, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, in, we uh, we've been talking about different things that we've been all the initiatives that we've uh, we've done. I think one of the things that uh, that I want to highlight and do want to bring forth uh, forth is the resources that we do have on campus. So you know the professional development resources that uh, we we continue to uh, to offer, like you know Marisa had mentioned, you know the the steep increase in the number of uh, offerings that we have for workshops and for sessions and so forth. So we we provide like you know soup to nuts support for faculty, you know literally in you know if you're, if they're teaching face to face, if they're teaching hybrid, if they're teaching high flex, if they want to convert their courses to online, uh, if they you know if they're you know at any skill level so uh, you know between uh, Mar marissa marvin and i we're working on uh, you know a plan uh, for faculty development this uh, this coming summer where uh, we will we will have multi-tiered uh, uh, faculty development available to uh, to faculty uh, where they can come in you know at the at the foundation level intermediate level if, they, if they're advanced level you know they, they can do that if they're doing course conversions we're trying to do this in line with with the offerings of the faculty center, and then some offerings through the chancellor's office. So, you know, our our, our you know our plan is to integrate uh, the offerings and you know the support that we can provide, and uh, you know make it available to to our faculty. So it's seamless, depending upon you know if they want to do inclusive pedagogy, access and equity issues, they can uh, take courses and workshops at the faculty center. If it's more uh, technical driven, uh, their needs, they can come to us and uh, do APS workshops. If they're doing some quality math or uh, some, uh, you know, certifications, we can, uh, you know, we can uh, partner them up with our chancellor's office uh, uh, offerings that uh, they have. So mm -hmm. I think there's a bunch of that. And then uh, I think I, I, I want to reiterate the fact that there are so many resources for, for students as well. Uh, Marvin mentioned that we uh, we offered a, a student pro professional development program, which we intend to uh, make permanent in the sense that it'll be available. We're converting that uh, one session into a sustainable on going uh, resource for students for uh, you know which will have uh, online resources for for students uh, uh, taking online cl uh, classes as well as face-to-face uh, -face classes and you know just getting them ready for uh, you know for for being effective and you know student of the future kind of so uh, with soft skills uh, with uh, with technical skills and so forth we partnered together with the learning center in putting some of these modules together so it was you know a collaborative effort between the learning center Center, uh, the faculty center and uh, ATS, and we put this together, and it's geared towards uh, this program. The student-driven program is geared towards supporting students. And you know, I, I also want to give a kudos and a shout out to our eight, uh, ITS partners who have done an excellent job in um, making sure that uh, they have laptops, headsets, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Brian, uh, you know, a few minutes ago, headsets, laptops, uh, and these kinds of things which are available to students. And you know, we want to make sure that you know they're available. So they should reach out and uh, make sure that they uh, they use these uh, these wonderful opportunities and these offerings and resources. Fantastic! And just to give a shout out uh, again, that was the very first time we've ever done student uh, professional development. So thank you very much. And Marisa, I know you you can you can add a lot to this. So uh, it's such a great and exciting thing. So please 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So I, for faculty, I would definitely let them know, you know, just working closely with faculty within these professional development opportunities, um, you know, a lot have expressed like they're thinking that their course has to be perfect or just the transition to AMI is very nerve wracking, right? So my advice would be it's not supposed to be perfect. It's okay if it's not perfect, please utilize ATS. Um, and you know, just hearing the students' responses from our student symposium that we had, uh, you know, uh, this semester, students really appreciate that, that things are not perfect because there are going to be hiccups with technology, right? Technology is, there is a, a, a learning curve when it comes to technology for all different users. So I think it really humanizes that experience for faculty and for students mm -hmm. to see that, which is very important to, to, for it to, you know, be transparent. So again, for faculty, I would say, do not expect things to be perfect. Please, you know, utilize ATS if you want, you know, if you, um, you know, want to learn more about technology and how to implement it in your course, but, you know, take that pressure off of you, right? As well as for students, you know, it's really important um, to, to stay connected with campus, you know, know what's going on in camp on campus, even if it is virtual events, right? Stay connected with your friends and especially resources like uh, Dr. Ahmed had mentioned, like the LAC, CAPS, VMAC, all these different resources. Same thing with ATS, right? If, you, if you're not familiar with Beachboard, please utilize us. You know, I think ATS, we have staff that are currently on campus now, and that's going to continue. And even now with the repopulation, we're going to have more staff. So, you know, come in for a walk-in if, if you need to have some type of training or you have a question, but that would be my advice for, for students and for faculty. Well, I am so delighted by that advice because it, it, it segues naturally into my next question. But before I get to that, I just wanted to say something else that you said, Marisa, which I really like. And uh, everybody knows uh, that uh, the famous saying of Voltaire, the French philosopher of the Enlightenment, who said, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Uh, and that's just what you said. And in fact, those are humanistic values. And uh, I am delighted to imagine that the future of, of, of technology is going to be humanized. Uh, so I'm not sure if, if uh, anyone wants to kick off talking about that. And it's a, certainly a deep philosophical question. What is the future of humankind? What is the future of uh, instructional technology? But um, Jeannie, how do you want to, do you want to, do you want to take that on and solve it for us? I'll, I'll start on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I invite uh, the, the others to, to chime in um, after. Um, I mean, just, just as a member of ATS and the various meetings that I attend, like I, I hear of various tools that are uh, coming, uh, that are introduced uh, for, for example, for Beach Bar. I mean, there's Blackboard Ally, there's Camtasia, there's whole sets of other tools um, that, that will help faculty and students um, better teach and learn. Um, so the so tools are always going to be uh, created. Uh, and uh, besides the learning management system, you know, there's the, the area of augmented reality, AR, um, uh, and virtual reality. Uh, these are areas that uh, there's been a lot of talk about on campus as, and not just in ATS, that I think the campus and ATS is going to explore more so that we can provide, you know, better better uh, learning situations for, for students. And I think that's that's very, very exciting. Um, so as, as all these new tools get introduced and um, new ways of teaching and learning get introduced um, as a programmer, um, I feel very excited to see that, you know, these systems, we need systems behind um, these tools uh, for, 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 them, for, for them to work. Uh, but as a programmer, um, I'm excited to see how these systems will eventually talk to each other. Uh, we're already doing that today between Beachboard and PeopleSoft and um, allowing instructors, for example, to import grades with a click of a button um, in, into PeopleSoft, which was very, which was something that's been asked for for a long time. And we were able to implement that very recently. And, and that project is still evolving because uh, we are, we're gonna incorporate something called merged courses, uh, which, uh, by by um, definition, if this is incorporating multiple classes into one roster, so that so 
instructors, instructors' rosters are that much bigger, but before they still had to en enter grades, you know, one by one into PeopleSoft. So uh, that's coming down the pipeline where, where it's going to be a click of a button. It's going to save instructors a lot of time. But going back to um, other, you know, other systems talking to each other, um, I mean, that's that's exciting for me, you know, for for uh, perhaps Blackboard Ally information get merged with course information and presented uh, in a report to to upper management to paint pictures or stories of how how tools are being used within the systems, how students are using tools, how instructors are using tools, and uh, possibly give hints to how engaged students are um, in, in, in the classrooms. Um, so in the end, you know, with all these tools being introduced and all this information being shared between systems, um, it's exciting to see what's going to come down, come down, um, uh, what, uh, come down the pipeline to, to, you know, with the ultimate goal of student success and, and uh, faculty success uh, for educational technology. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeannie. And that's, you know, it's so true. Uh, the pace of change is so is so increasingly fast these days that sometimes it, 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 it's quite challenging. Uh, but I do cast my mind back to, you know, uh, the original Greek geometers who were scratching uh, patterns in the sand. And uh, what a shock uh, to their system must have been chalk on a blackboard. Uh, and that was new technology once, and I'm sure people feared it and uh, couldn't use it. And, uh, uh, you know, the new technology that's coming in thick and fast now uh, sometimes makes people fearful. But I think if we humanize it, it can be effectively used. Um, I don't know. I'm sure other people may want to add to this, but uh, welcome. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on okay. that one, too. Um, okay. Just, um, I think like just what you're mentioning, Brian and Jeannie, just, I think it's not about the next shiny tool. You know, I think what we're, where we're facing in the near future is more like everybody having a, a more empathetic approach on just how that affects the teaching and learning within our campus. And I think um, on being online, I mean, we've experienced this, it's just gonna be the new norm, you know, trying to match or try to increase our campus student population. We have to offer these things. We have to offer more, video options you know everyone's on that viral video we're trying to watch the next lecture and all that stuff too but you know it's going to be either live on demand or just you know offered synchronously and, and things as well but i think for me in the future it's 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 going to continue to evolve uh, my kids you know are doing google meets they're doing all these other things now naturally it's just going to compress to a point where they can do everything Possible. either mobily or you know virtually or whatever you want to call it but i think it's it's, we just need to make sure that we're ready for those students. And that's kind of where we want to head to in the future. Terrific. Thanks, Marvin. And oh, Dennis, you get the last word on this one, I think. I guess so. Uh, I'm going to try to encapsulate what everybody has just said, because I'm not going to be saying anything that's, that's so much different than what everybody else has said. Uh, but ATS really tries to do our, our best to uh, provide students and faculty, specifically faculty, the resources they need to help students achieve learning outcomes. And uh, has the, how has the pandemic changed our roles or our jobs? It really hasn't. We've constantly been doing this since the beginning. What it has done, and like a brilliant colleague of mine said uh, just the other day, it's like drinking out of a water hose. Uh, it just does what we do on a day-to-day -day basis that much quicker. It's accelerated everything. Uh, the collaboration between us and other departments, whether it's enrollment services, or the Department of IT, or Faculty Affairs, uh, has just increased. Uh, the number of workshops that we've done has just increased. Uh, the content is about the same. We may have pivoted a little bit in what our focus was before the pandemic to what we are now, but they've always been there. Uh, you know, remote and uh, in, per, uh, in person uh, education has always been going on, has just increased. And if anything, it, uh, the, the synchronous technologies have uh, increased exponentially. I think a lot of the asynchronous was uh, our focus prior to the, 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 uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. But synchronous, especially in-person and remote, is where we're going and where we, where, where we are now. It's one of the reasons why we've seen our Zoom numbers just skyrocket through, through, this, uh, through the roof. Um, 
I know that uh, a lot of the, the essential employees that have been on campus, their, their workload has increased 500%. We typically do about 13 classrooms every summer to upgrade those with new technologies. This next summer, we're, we're doing over 65. Uh, that's 65 additional to the 13 that we normally do. So this is just a huge increase in effort. It's not anything different, it's just a lot more. Uh, so I really see the future is it's gonna be a continued evol uh, evolution of where we are now. They might uh, ramp down a little bit, but it's still gonna be on that, 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 that same path where the technologies are, are gonna be leveraged even greater than they were before. Uh, just like the chalkboard, you know, now it's going to be a white or now it's a whiteboard. Now it's going to be a digital whiteboard. It's a learning class. It's it's all these new things, uh, AR and VR. These humanizing technologies is really just that. The synchronous learning environment is more humanizing than an asynchronous because it involves right. multiple people. Uh, I think things like AR and VR are going to do the same thing as well. So it's just an evolution of where we're going. It's this pandemic has just sped it up. Fascinating. And to take the humanizing theme to its conclusion, uh, let me ask you a personal question. Let me ask all of you a personal question. What have you done to sort of look after yourselves during this tough time? How have you uh, distracted yourself from, from the pandemic, from the workload? Have you taken up any new hobbies? Do you have any new interests? Have you done anything new? Just a question, how do you look after yourself? I can say for me personally, uh, things like going to the gym and exercising has definitely changed. Uh, everybody knows the gym's got shut down. So for me, I started virtual bike riding. I got myself uh, a, oh. a, my, my mountain bike and I put it on a little stand and it's hooked up to my iPad and I get to virtually ride my bicycle with other people around the world. Uh, I think that's probably very similar to what a lot of our students and faculty are doing. Instead of going to their classrooms, their physical environments, they're figuring out ways to connect to the world from home. So that's what I did with my exercise. Great. Okay. Anyone else? Wow. Well, I can add to that. Um, I'm getting my hands dirty by learning how to garden. So gardening oh, is something that I've, I've learned and I regret that I didn't do it before. But yeah, it's been very, um, you know, stress relief or just yeah very interesting I, I enjoy it very much so that's great small. what what what's your what's your favorite thing that you've grown so I'm starting small with herbs because I heard the herbs are, are easy right. not to die <laughs> so herbs and then tomatoes so yeah oh, so like fabulous. Parsley and basil. yeah there's nothing like sort of uh vegetables or fruits that you've grown yourself is is that exactly and yeah wonderful um anyone else Jeannie. Uh, so what, what I've done, because um, I, I have a gym membership too, but I haven't gone to the gym in the past year, but um, every uh, average, every other morning, I'll take a jog around, around the neighborhood, mm. get some fresh air, because I'll be inside working for, for eight hours in, 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 at home. Um, another thing that I've done, because I have two kids who are in elementary school, and they're on Zoom for, for school sure. these days as well. Um, during breaks, uh, my husband and I, we make it a point to just take a walk around the block with the kids because they need fresh air too. They need to, to, to get some sunlight on their skin. Um, so that, that's that been really helpful. Um, just, you know, also to get, you know, a, a break from the screen as well. And one thing we recently started doing as a family is uh, we try to meditate, like just, just kind of, um, just get ready, uh, wind, wind down at the end of the day and uh, just make it a family um, activity to just meditate and uh, rest your minds and get ready for your physical rest. And I think that's been very, very helpful for, for everyone. And I recommend it to everyone. What, what, what great ideas from everyone. So, so bike riding, gardening, meditating, all wonderful. How about you, Marvin? You, you've also got kids. How's that been? It's been fun. Um, I mean, just to kind of mimic what uh, what Jeannie's was saying, I, I think just having a mindful time, like with mm -hmm. the kids, having a meal together, sitting down, enjoying, and just you know, no devices. You know, throw your stuff on the on the side. And you don't don't touch anything here too. But I think one thing just to kind of differentiate from everyone here is just you know taking up more, um, I guess, more home cooking because we have to cook at home. We have more time to 
you know, got to supply the kids with, with the, uh, you know, something different than cereal every day, right? So, um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think just learning more about cultural uh, foods, I'm, I'm Filipino, so we do like, um, you know, make uh, lumpia or egg rolls together and just doing, making a fun activity for the kids and, and with the full family experience. So things like that, they're engaging, they're learning culturally and things too. So outside of that, just, you know, healthy, try to stay healthy, you know, exercise when you can, you know, and yeah, that's, I think that's all we got to do. Just be mindful. I think the meditation thing that Jeannie said, that that's, that's crucial, at least at the end of the day to unwind. Mm -hmm. Great. And I love this idea that in the middle of a pandemic, we're, we're going in both directions. So we're using technology in the way that Dennis is to ride with people around the world. And we're also doing things that maybe our grandparents did, like cooking with family or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great human experience. Um, how about you, Sharik? Well, um, you know, everyone has just raised the bar so much, so I'll have to make something up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, the basic stuff. You know, uh, one thing that I, I may have mentioned to the team is that, you know, uh, while there are challenges uh, working from home and stuff like that, but I think this is the, you know, past year and a half, this is the most amount of time that at least I uh, have spent with my family. Uh, mm. You know, if, if we count the number of hours, you know, we've, you know, because we leave, we, you know, I've always commuted. So you uh, leave early in the morning, come back really late. And so, right. you know, didn't meet the family so much. So I, I think that's been, you know, there's challenges, you know, there's uh, the, the regular scream and shout out, uh, you know, at the kids to, you know, to keep it down. Well, you know, we're in the middle of an important meeting with maybe, maybe you, uh, Brian. <laughs> so uh, That's not an important meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been it's been an inter interesting process, but just like you know, just the regular usual non techy stuff, uh, going for walks, and uh, you know, I, I recently taught uh, our six year old uh, how to bike. So, you know, uh, my daughter, uh, my you can join daughter, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we, we do the real thing though. So we, we actually ah, go on the street okay. and, you know, we, 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 we take uh, the bikes out and, you know, they get super excited about it. So yeah, I think uh, was, it, was it hard to let go? Oh, it was tough. I, it, it, it was a workout. I had to run after him, uh, you know, to, uh, to make sure that he doesn't fall. So. Yeah. Well, it's great to, to sort of do some of the, 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 the regular things as well, but, um, what, what's so interesting, you know, I was thinking about this. It's, it's, it's relatively recent in history that people have left home to work. You know, it's really only the industrial revolution before that people worked from home or on the farm or, or whatever it was that they were doing. And so it must be quite deep in us to sort of be at home and just work. So uh, maybe maybe that's the, maybe the future will be like the past and the Greeks will, will, will be confirmed correct and everything is just a circle. But uh, who knows? Uh, anyway, it has been a real joy and delight to meet uh, with you, Sharik, and your great team. Congratulations again on the President's Team Award. It's obviously well-deserved, and thank you, thank you for everything that you've done for our students and our faculty and our staff and uh, for me. And um, I am absolutely sure that whatever the future brings in terms of technology we're in good hands with you all so thank you very much and uh, go beach